Hello and welcome to another session in English language. And today our focus is first on tenses and then on register on government and politics. But before that, let us review the previous lesson. Welcome back. Like I said today, our focus is on tenses. So, and I said tenses refer to the time and action was performed. The time and action was performed, which can be in the present, the past, or future time. Okay? So, it could be it could be then, it could be now, or it could be later. So, then refers to yesterday, past, now refers to present, and later refers to what future. So, let's look at the various tenses we have. Under the present tense, we have simple present tense, we have the present continuous tense, we have the present perfect tense. We have the present perfect continuous tense. So let's start with simple present tenses. Under the simple present tenses, we have such expressing what you call habitual action. Something you do on daily basis. Okay, that's what we use the simple present tense for. For instance, the man knows my name. Okay, he knows my name. So, knows there is a simple present tense verb. I eat rice. It's habitual. I work every day. I run 12 kilometers every day. So, so you can see run here is a simple present tense verb okay still on simple present tense verb we also use them to state what you call universal truth or what you call natural all right that's what you use the simple present tense verb for for instance the earth is spherical is there is what is the simple present tense verb okay it's unchanging it's a universal truth the re earth remains spherical it hasn't changed africa is the second largest continent okay so that's another fact so when you are trying to state a natural fact or phenomenon or a universal truth you use the simple present tense verb it is also used in football commentaries okay alex iwobi passes the ball to victor moses victor moses dribbles the player and hits the ball into the back of the net and it's a goal oh no the referee disqualifies that so if you look at every of the verb used there they are in the simple present tense form passes dribbles hits is disqualifies they are all simple present tense there okay so also we have what is called the present continuous tense verb and most of the time we form the present continuous tense verb by addition of ing to the main verb okay so for instance come becomes plus ing becomes coming go plus ing becomes what going okay so for instance she is cooking so it's showing a present continuous tense something is still happening it's continuous it's in a state of continuity she is cooking i didn't say she cooked she is cooking we are playing football Okay, so that's present continuous tense. Then we have the present perfect tense. 
So how do you form the present perfect tense? By the addition of has or have with the perfect form of the verb root or what you call the participle. What you call the participle. For instance, go, we have went and the participle, past participle is gone. We have speak here becoming spoke becoming spoken we have do here did here and what done so every time you want to form the present perfect tense you use the verb to have and what are the verb to have we have has we have have and we have what had okay so most probably use the has and have okay so they have gone out per present perfect tense they have gone out he has spoken to her we have done the work so they are all verbs in their past present perfect tenses okay then we have the present perfect continuous tense when you are dealing with that you use the verb to have okay plus the verb in ing that is in the ing form okay so for instance i have been working okay it's it's present perfect and still continuous they have been doing it she has been singing they have been reading okay so all of these are examples of the present perfect continuous tenses so let's move on to our register on government and politics so we start with the first one government the government is a machinery that seeks to control the states okay the machinery that seems that seeks to control what the state is known as what government while democracy is the government whereby the majority rule a state that is people choose their leaders who occupy what public what offices for a fixed term of office okay so it's a government whereby the majority rule a state all right and according to abraham lincoln it is government of the people by the people and for the people so this definition of democracy was given by abraham lincoln a former american president okay then we have what is called oligarchy now oligarchy is simply a system of government where the few privileged and powerful people rule okay so it's not everyone only those that are privileged and what powerful they are the ones who are in charge in what they call an oligarch system okay so oligarchy is a system of government where few persons rule okay it's government of the minority then we have what is called the mace the mace is a symbol of legislative authority okay without the mace present there will be no legislative proceedings okay so in Gambia over there, I believe there is a maze during the parliamentary sessions in the legislative house. Okay. Then we have adjudicate. Adjudicate means to settle a legal case or dispute. Okay. To settle a legal case or dispute. Then we have a bill. A bill is a draft of a law. Okay. It is a proposed law. It's an unapproved law. Then we have enactment. Enactment means the act of making a law. So when you say they enact a law, we are saying the process of making the law. Then we have assent. Assent is the signature of the executive um, organ of government. Assent is the signature of the executive organ of government in 
a presidential system. So the president's approval of any law enacted by the legislature is referred to as what? Asset. Then we have what we call rule of law. Rule of law is simply the supremacy of the law over everyone in a country. Then we have what is called constitutionalism. Constitutionalism is simply a principle where the constitution is supreme over all. That is, the activities of both the citizens and the government are guided by provisions of the constitution. Nobody acts outside the provision of the constitution. Then we have what is called ultravirus. Ultravirus means beyond one's power. So, any of these, one of the ways the organs of government check each other's excesses. Then we have null and void. And null and void simply means invalid. Okay, so when you declare anything null and void, it simply means that thing is invalid. Then we have bureaucracy. Bureaucracy is simply the structure and regulations put in place in order to control operations and activities in government. Okay, so there are certain structures, there are certain regulations. All right, that are put in place by the government in order to what to control the operations and activities okay then we have what we call recess recess is simply holiday of vacation for law makers okay holiday of vacation for law makers then who is a legislator or a parliamentarian is simply a lawmaker okay then when we use the word gubernatorial it means something connected with the position of the governor so for instance if you say gubernatorial elections gubernatorial elections means that such elections has an affiliation with what with the position of the governor then we also have senatorial it has to do with what the senate okay which is the upper chamber of the legislative house okay then we have the ministry ministry is just a department or administrative department in government institutions or parastatals every government parastatal have what is called administrative departments so they are called what ministries then we have what you call portfolio portfolio simply means your position the post you occupy okay then we have the cabinet which refers to the persons that work alongside the governor or president, as the case may be. So those that work with the governor are called commissioners, while those that work with the president are called ministers. Then there's what is called tyranny, which is a brutal way of ruling people, Okay, where you, you make use of force, right? Then we have what we call the prerogative of mercy. Prerogative of mercy simply means the power of the executive to grant pardon to offenders or prisoners. Then we have what we call constituency. Constituency simply means the districts carved out for representation during elections. Then there is also what is called gerrymandering. Gerrymandering is simply carving out constituency constituencies where they are not supposed to exist okay so the and the aim of gerrymandering is electoral fraudulence or what you call electoral malpractice so gerrymandering is simply carving out you know constituencies you know for dishonest reasons okay then defection defection another word for defection is cross carpeting okay when you leave one party one political party for another we say you have defected or you have cross capital okay and lastly we have what we call nationalism nationalism is simply your love for your country your loyalty for your country such that you are able to die for your country and there's something we call jingoism jingoism simply means excess love for your country and hatred for Others. So the moment you love your country and you hate other countries, you said you are exhibiting what is called jingoism. So with this, we've come to the end of today's lesson. Thank you very much for joining. In order to refresh your memory, 
and recall all that has been taught in today's lesson, I would encourage you to take the test that appears on your screen.